Don't worry. Don't react to the things that you don't prefer. Because remember, even if something crops up in your life you don't prefer, it's still there for a reason you can use in a positive way. Make it part of your excitement that things crop up you don't prefer because it's going to give you an opportunity to see by contrast what it is you do prefer more clearly. That's how to use that in a positive way instead of simply matching the vibration of what you don't prefer by moping about it. The idea is nothing affects you until you agree to be affected. You are changing your own energy to match the frequencies of things you believe are true. So watch your definitions and create new definitions that work for you instead of just assuming that the ones that don't work for you are facts that you cannot change. The only facts that exist in your creation are the five facts we call the five laws. You exist, everything is here and now. The one is all, the all are one. What you put out is what you get back. Everything changes except the laws. Everything else other than those facts are not facts. They are perspectives, they are opinions, they are beliefs. And you can change every single one of those. You do get a picture in your imagination of who you prefer to be, what you prefer to be doing, where you prefer to be doing it, how you prefer to be doing it. When you see that, all you really have to do is mimic it, mirror it, act it out as best as you can on all levels of your life. All you have to do is be like that person in your mind's eye. Do things the way he or she would do it. And then when you start doing things the way he or she would do it, you will change your vibration to the vibration that is representative of that life. And when you shift your vibration to the representation of that life, you will start to synchronistically have that life. All the things that are representative of what that you would have will come in. So that's how to use your imagination as an actual tool, an actual application tool. The idea being that when you open up to your imagination, you reset yourself, take yourself back to zero. Then you create the picture that is you, that you prefer to be. Then you act like it. You behave like it. And then you have one, two, three, the whole manifestation process right there. One, two, three. Let yourself reset using your imagination. Let yourself create using your imagination. Let yourself act it out using your imagination. And your imagination, thus then used in the one, two, three way, will allow you to become the majority. The idea of one of the strongest mantras for humans on earth, one of the strongest tools, is as you wake up in the morning and as you go to sleep at night, to say, mm -hmm. Perhaps at least three times, I am who I am, and that is enough. I am who I am, and that is enough. I am who I am, and that is enough. And then see what synchronicity brings you with the willingness to let go of all restrictions, all limitations, all assumptions, and all insistences that in your unconscious subconscious and conscious mind don't actually serve you or don't align with the vibration of your true ethereal spiritual core. Then reality will unfold as it needs to, to serve you best. Abundance, the ability to do what you need to do when you need to do it, period. The ability to do what you need to do when you need to do it. Sometimes that might require money, and if money is required, money will be there. If money isn't there, what does that tell you? Money may not be required to give you the ability to do what you need to do when you need to do it. Now, we understand that money is one of the valid symbols of exchange and abundance on your planet, but it isn't the only one. Many times when you have been raised to believe that money is necessary to do certain things, you actually short change yourself by closing the doors through which other forms of abundance might actually have brought that ability to you. So it can be that you have a belief that says that certain things cannot be done, that you cannot experience abundance 
unless it comes in the form of money, when in fact you could be allowing abundance to come to you in many other forms, including money, when and where it's actually the most effortless form of abundance required for a certain thing. So the way that this law of attraction and manifestation actually works is to recognize that you are already giving off, already radiating a core signature vibration. And that core signature vibration is already doing everything it can possibly do to attract everything that is representative of that particular frequency. If the things that are representative of that particular frequency are not manifesting in your life, it's not because you're not attracting them, it's because your beliefs are keeping them at bay. So it's not that you have to learn to attract them, it's that you have to learn to let go of vibrations that are not compatible with your core frequency that are keeping those things from getting to you, from manifesting in your reality. And conversely, all the things that are not compatible with your core vibration are doing their best to get as far away from you as they possibly can. The only reason they may not be is because you're holding on to them and not letting them go. So the law of attraction is really not necessarily about having to learn to attract something. The law of attraction is really all about letting go and letting in. That's really all it's about. It's about being yourself, living in the moment, being your true vibration, and then allowing Everyone needs other people to help them in achieving their dreams. We all need each other. In the business world, we need each other's market and ideas. In the personal world, we need each other's inspiration and cooperation. The attitude of other people affects each of us, and the attitude of each of us has the capacity to affect all of us. The American Pledge of Allegiance and its 31 words that we often repeat as an expression of our loyalty begins with I and concludes with all. That is what America is all about. You and I working together to create greatness. We are uniquely influenced and affected by each other in our pursuit of the American dream. We become a powerful force when each of us understands how powerful all of us are and when all of us understand how valuable each of us is. What can all of us do? The most incredible things, we can go to the moon and beyond. We can solve the mysteries of disease, diminish famine and suffering, enhance the number and quality of opportunities available for everyone, and create that which does not yet exist, that will improve the conditions of all mankind. We can bring peace where there was once war and friendship where animosity once prevailed. We can explore the heavens, examine the ocean depths, and investigate the unlimited creativity and capacity of the human mind. Nothing is beyond our imagination, and imagination is the starting point for all progress. The contribution of all of us is so important to each of us. All of us in the company, the church, the family, the community, and the classroom are intricately connected to each of us. Our attitude about that interconnection of each of us to all of us and all of us to each of us has great influence on our future. As John Donne once wrote, no man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. Any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. What would happen if we all put our minds to work and read the books, took the classes, and discovered new ways to refine our philosophy. What would happen if we all developed a new attitude about the past, the present, and the future? What would happen if we all changed our feelings about one another and the importance of each individual to our collective destiny? If we did all that, just imagine what an incredible effect this would have on our future. The exciting thing is that each of us already has enough mental, spiritual, intellectual, and creative power to do all that we could ever dream of doing. Everyone has it. We just need to become more aware of all that we already have and spend more time refining all that we already are, and then put it to work for us. What stops us from recognizing our inherent gifts and talents is a poor attitude about ourselves. 
Why are we so quick to see the value in others and yet so reluctant to see it in ourselves? Why are we always ready to applaud someone else's accomplishment and yet so shy about recognizing our own? How we see ourselves is a matter of choice, not circumstances, and the major determining factor in how we feel about ourselves lies in our personal philosophy. If we were to ask some people why they feel the way they do about certain issues, we would probably discover that the reason why they feel the way they do is because they really don't know a great deal about those issues. Lacking all of the information, they form conclusions based on the bits and pieces that have come their way. With their limited knowledge, they often make poor decisions about how things are. If they knew better, they would think better. In other words, they would reach better conclusions simply by increasing their knowledge. And here is another part of the equation. If they knew better, they would feel better. Why would they feel better? Because they would begin to make better decisions, and from those better decisions, they would start making better choices, which would produce better results. Our attitude is shaped by decisions and choices we have made based on the knowledge we have acquired. Imagine the artist who wants to paint a masterpiece, but who has only a few colors on his palette. He may have the desire to create a masterpiece, but he lacks the variety of colors which the painting of a true masterpiece requires. This is what happens to human beings with limited knowledge. They lack the mental colors with which to create a complete picture. If there is one area in the knowledge department where we cannot afford to be lacking, it is knowledge and awareness of our own uniqueness. We do not feel better about ourselves for the simple reason that we do not really know ourselves. For if we truly knew ourselves, our strengths, our abilities, our resources, our depth of feeling, our sense of humor, our unique accomplishments, we would never again doubt our ability to create a better future. Each of us is unique. There's no one else in the world quite like us. We are the only ones who can do the special things we do. And what we do is special. We may not win great awards or public acclaim for our deeds, but we make the world a better place because of them. We make our families stronger, our offices more efficient, and our community more prosperous because we are who we are. Changing how we feel about ourselves begins with developing a new philosophy about the value of each human being, ourselves included. Most of us are so busy living our lives that we never pause long enough to appreciate all that we do in a given day. We have no appreciation of ourselves simply because we have no awareness of ourselves. Self-knowledge is a critical part of the life puzzle. As we learn more about who we are, we begin to make better choices and decisions for ourselves and about ourselves. And as we have already suggested, as our choices improve, so do our results. And as our results improve, so does our attitude.